Hi everyone, I'm Natasha Barlow and I'm really excited to walk you through this tutorial video today that will briefly discuss how you can actually take your love of birds to the next level by visiting birdgardens.ca, which is Birds Canada's new conservation initiative gardening for birds. How can we actually recreate habitat in our yards to help wildlife, specifically birds? And this tutorial will focus on how to use this website, birdgardens.ca, to choose plants that are regionally tailored to your specific area in Canada and what plants you want to use to garden for birds. So when you navigate to birdgardens.ca, this is likely what you'll see. This is the home page of the website. You can feel free to check out the videos that are bite-sized information on how to actually garden for birds, some summary information on why we should garden for birds, and then you'll scroll down to this area of the home page. This is our three-step process on how you actually start choosing plants to put into your garden. Step one is looking at the different tips on how to actually plan your garden. Step two is finding your bird garden zone, which we'll talk about a little bit later. And step three is using our plant selector tool to actually develop that list of plants that you want to use in your garden. Feel free to scroll down and check out the other really amazing information below, but for now, we're going to focus on these three steps. So clicking on step one, you'll navigate to our planning your garden page. And this area tells you exactly what elements you want to be aware of in your garden. What does your soil and moisture look like? Your sunlight conditions. Is it full sun? Is it part shade? Are you next to a grassland? Are you next to a forest? And other elements to consider including in your garden. Different structural diversity. You want tall trees as well as short shrubs. Seasonal diversity. Do you want flowers in the spring and maybe some berries in the fall and winter? What shelter do you want to provide for species to be able to nest in? And maybe you want to include a water feature as well. So this page is really geared towards getting you to be curious about your outdoor space. So once you've learned what different elements are at your outdoor space, you can navigate to finding your bird garden zone. Bird garden zones are Birds Canada's way to categorize different regions in Canada based on their climate, the elevation, different habitat types, different biogeographical regions. These zones, if you scroll down, cover the entirety of Canada, unless you're in the extreme north, as well as the northern border of the United States. You can learn which bird garden zone you exist in by looking at the map and seeing the different numbers, one, two, three, four, etc., all the way to number 22. So you can visually look at this and say that you're in St. John's on the island of Newfoundland. You can see that you're in zone number 22. Or maybe you're in Whitehorse in the Yukon. You can see that you're in zone number one. So if you're able to just visually look at this map, you could potentially see which zone you live in. If you want to scroll down and you live in southern British Columbia, southern Ontario, or southern Quebec, or Eastern Ontario. These areas have zoomed in maps because they are highly populated and will help you determine which zone you live in if you're in this area. If you want to look a little bit more into which area of the map your zone is, you can navigate to the interactive map, which opens up this additional tab. This will show all of the bird garden zones across Canada, again, and the United States in the north. A welcome tab will open up that shows you a little bit of information. It gives you a little bit of help on how to actually use this map. But just quickly, you can close and say that you are located at 115 Front Road in Port Rowan, Ontario. You can click on that. The map will zoom in and it'll automatically pop up which zone you are in. So that address falls in the Carolinian Forest Zone in Zone 16. You can also navigate to the full plant list and this full plant list has every single plant that's in our database for zone 16 regardless of what environmental conditions are at your site. So if you're just interested in seeing what range of plants can actually be planted in your garden potentially, feel free to click on more info. But if you're not entirely sure 
what your location is on the map, you can click this button, which will directly take you to your actual location based on your GPS. And that only works if you do have location enabled. So feel free to click on that if you want to pinpoint it without typing in an address or a postal code. If you're curious to see other zones, you can feel free to click back to that default extent using the home button, that house, and you can just say, well, what zone is this area in northern Quebec and northern Labrador? Well, it's actually the northeastern boreal zone, which is zone number 15. Or maybe you're interested in which zone is this on the western side of Vancouver Island? That's the Northern Pacific Rainforest Zone, zone number three. Or potentially you're located on that transition boundary between two zones. For example, maybe you're located in Woodstock, Ontario. You can zoom in and you can see that it's actually pretty close to two different regions. It's in number 16, the Carolinian Forests, but it's also really close. As you can see, there's two different zones here. It's really close to the Eastern Great Lakes, St. Lawrence Valley Lowland Forest, which is number 17. So if you're in Woodstock or if you're in other transitional zones, you can actually memorize the zone numbers of both number 16 and also number 17. So once you've memorized your zone number, you can navigate back to the website and you can go to the plant selector tool to start choosing which plants are more likely to be successful in that zone number. I'll additionally point out that if you are interested in having text-based zone descriptions, you can click on the additional resources tab, you can scroll down and there will be zone specific fact sheets that will tell you a list of 10 plants for each of our zones that you can consider planting, but they also have text-based descriptions as well. But feel free to go back to your plant selector tool, which is where we'll start selecting for plants and building your customized plant list. This database has over 500 native plant species, species that naturally occur in different regions and that the wildlife are more accustomed to. And you can either choose the basic search option, which will show you all different types of plants. They are not plant type specific, like the trees, shrubs, herbs, or vines categories, which are specific to those plant types. You can scroll down and if you change your mind and you want to learn about different plant types, feel free to choose that. Otherwise, remember how we were in say zone nine, for example, but maybe you're on that transition zone and maybe you're actually between zone nine and zone 10. You can see that the database is live filtering as you're adding in more options. Then you can scroll down and you can choose the different sun, soil and moisture conditions of your actual garden where you want to plant these species. So say that you're in zone number nine and 10, you have an area on your garden that you're wanting to plant species in and it has partial sun and partial shade for some of the day. Maybe your soil is more heavy, it's a little bit more clay and maybe your moisture condition is moist but well drained. As you click all of these options, again, you can see that this database is live filtering. So then these are all of the plants in the database that fit into zone nine and 10 with partial sun, clay soil, and moist but well drained moisture. If you're interested in learning a little bit more about these plants, say that you look at marsh marigold and you say, wow, that's a beautiful species. You can click on the photo and that'll take you to the actual plant species page. You can scroll down, you can look at different photos to see what else it looks like. I'm very excited to plant one of these in my garden. And then you can scroll down and there's a lot more information that you can find. You can look at the different wildlife features. These seem to have flowers that attract insect pollinators, as well as nectar for birds like hummingbirds. And they also have small seeds for species like small sparrows. Marsh marigold can exist in a wide variety of bird garden zones, a variety of different soil conditions, as well as full and partial sun. So this is the area where you can see a variety of different information, as well as this one, the USDA hardiness zone. 
the USDA hardiness zone number will give you an idea of how cold tolerant each of these plants are. And we'll talk a little bit about that in a minute. But if you do like what you see for Marsh Marigold, you can click on this heart that says add, and that will add it to your list. You can scroll up, you can click on the top right of the screen, that heart in the yellow, and that will take you to your list. So right now we have Marsh Marigold saved on your list. You can think of it as almost a shopping cart function on a website. If you navigate back to the plant selector tool and you can click on how to use the plant selector and you scroll down, there is information in here that talks about the different USDA hardiness values which are based on the average coldest winter temperature typically experienced within a zone each year. And these can really help predict which plants are more likely to thrive in the certain areas. So I highly recommend viewing this information and clicking on this link, which will help you determine which hardiness zone you live in. But if you're interested in different types of plants, say that you're happy with your marsh marigold, but you're actually more interested in trees, for example. You can click on one of these options. These are categories based on plant specific types. So again, trees, shrubs, herbs, and vines. You can scroll down and say that you're in bird garden zone nine and also 10. And you're looking for an area that is shady. You have a wide variety of soil conditions, so you're not interested in clicking on that. And then you can scroll down and there are these other options that were not available before in the basic search. You have the size option. You can click on that question mark and it'll tell you the different size categories. So for example, we're looking at trees. So a small tree, for example, grows to a height of between five to 10 meters. So say that you're looking for a small tree. And then you can scroll down and you can see evergreen or deciduous is also an option and different wildlife features. You can also notice that not all of the wildlife features in the database are actually listed here. Again, that's because it is filtering live as you're choosing these different selections. So right now you can choose cones, flowers for insect pollinators, or small seeds. Things like acorns and large seeds or berries and droops are not available right now for wildlife features in this zone for this size category and that's completely fine you might just need to find that in different plant types so you can scroll up after selecting those choices and you're left with mountain maple and black spruce once you've selected all of your different filters you end up with mountain maple and black spruce. So say you're interested in mountain maple. Again, you can click on that photo. You can scroll down to look at different photos as well. And you can see the different information for this tree. You can scroll up if you're interested. You can click add. That will be added to your list. And then you can scroll up. You can click again on that yellow heart, which will take you to your list. And we should have marsh marigold and now an additional mountain maple on our actual list. And there we go. Once you've gone through that process and you've identified which species you're interested in adding to your garden, you can navigate to your list. You can copy this link. You can email it to yourself. You can post it in an additional tab and that will take you back to that list. So you can share it with individuals. You can share it with yourself. And there we go, marsh marigold and mountain maple. Alternatively, if you're happy with this list as is, you can feel free to go ahead and print and it'll open up your print option and feel free to go ahead and print that list if you're wanting to bring it to a nursery to start gardening for birds today.